Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'm here with a savvy tip on how to use a text editor called Vim on Linux. The reason to learn and to use Vim is that it's a very quick and efficient text editor that you can use while exploring the file system and using a terminal in Linux. Instead of having to move away from a terminal and use a graphical text editor, Vim makes it really easy to go ahead and edit those files on the fly using the terminal. This includes various documents, programming files, configuration files, and many, many other different types of files. Really, the main thing you can't edit is compiled programs, but you can still open them up, although you'll just see gibberish. What also makes Vim great is that it's a cross-distribution program and can even be used on Mac OS since it's a Unix based platform. If you're new and stopping by to watch a savvy tip today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more for future tips and videos. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal where we'll learn how to use Vim. If you need help navigating the file system or understanding what a terminal is, please check out my first savvy tip, which is the absolute basics video on terminal emulators. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to check it out. And real quick, I'm going to search for a specific directory here on the system, which is a program that I've been working on and will be a perfect place where we can create a new file. All right, and right now I'm inside a program that I've been creating where we're going to go ahead and open up a file. So I'm going to print the contents of this simple list directory and I'm going to go ahead and change to the source directory. Inside the source directory I have a file called main.cpp. I'm going to go ahead and make an edit to it. So in order to open up a file using vim, you simply type vim and then a file name. So the file name we're going to use is main.cpp, at least in my case, and we might get an error here. And that's because most systems actually come with vi, which is the vim tiny package. If we do vi space dash v, that'll tell us the version here, and we can see that it's vim version 8.1 being used. What I'm going to do real quick is install the vim package. So here in Ubuntu 20.04, we just have to enter in this command here which it already gives us. So if we do sudo space app space install space vim, we'll install the vim package. After you have installed that package, now you can use vim instead of vi, and you'll get a few extra tools with this package. So now I'm gonna type in vim space, whatever file I wanna open, so it's main.cpp for me, and now I'm inside that file. As you can see here, we have quite a few lines. At the bottom it tells you there's 20 lines in this entire file that we have main.cpp open and that there's 470 characters in the entire file. So in order to get around a file, you'll mainly use the arrow keys. So if you press down, of course it goes down and up, it'll go up. But if you go to a line and you start using the right arrow, it'll navigate your cursor and highlight the various different characters as you keep hitting the cursor. Same goes for going left, and you can also use the J, K, L, and H keys in order to navigate as well, but you might as well use the arrow keys since they're available and easy. So using our arrow keys, we can go through this file fairly easily, and in order to go ahead and edit something, we can use the insert command. How do we do this? Well, all you have to do is press I, and you'll see at the very bottom in the left-hand corner, then we'll say insert. This means that you can currently insert characters or delete them. So if I press the backspace, you can see that I'm getting rid of the username. And now I can put something else in place of this. So I can put the username was not supplied. And now the magic key to get out of any operation inside Vim is the escape key. If you ever get lost, just go ahead and press escape a few times. This will automatically get you out of whatever operation that you're currently in just like we were in insert down here and now we're not in any operation and allow you to go ahead and put in another operation. So what I can do here is if I press the O key, that's actually gonna create a new line underneath the one that I was currently at and allow me to start inserting characters. So I might want to say something else here like, sorry. And then if I press escape a couple more times, we can get out of that insert command again. So I allows you to insert wherever the cursor is currently located. So again, if I press I, I'm inserting here. And then if I escape, I'm out of the insert. If I press O, now I'm inserting here. This is great, but what happens if you messed up? Well, you can hit escape again and you just press U and U stands for undo. So every time you press U, Vim will automatically undo the last operation. So you can see here that I'm undoing all of my changes until it says we're already at our oldest change. So just know that you can always hit escape and you if you mess something up and you want to undo. 
another neat command to know. If you hit escape a few times and you type in colon, as you can see here in the bottom now, Vim is waiting for some type of operation here. So if we type Q, what Q will do is exit out of the program without saving. So colon Q exits out of the program and doesn't save. And then if we add a exclamation point behind the Q, this command here will exit out of the program and disregard all changes that are currently in the program without asking you. Because if you just do colon Q, and it realizes you've made changes, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to do something with those changes. So right now, I don't have any changes made, so I'm gonna do colon Q. If I press enter, I'm outside the program. Let's open up main CPP again. I'm gonna press I to insert something and just type inserted, inserted here. And now escape, and I'm gonna do colon Q again. And you can see down here, we get an error. It says no writes since last change, so you didn't save your changes. Add exclamation point to override. So I don't wanna save these changes. I'm gonna go ahead and do colon Q and then exclamation point. That should exit out of the program and disregard all my changes. And now if we open up Vim again, you can see that inserted is not here. Well, these are the bare basics here. The one other thing that you'll need to know is how to save a file after editing it in Vim. So that one's fairly simple too. Let me just make a change. So I'm gonna press I for insert and just say make a change to this file. Well, if I do that and I press escape a couple times, I can do colon W, which will write the file. So as you can see, it said main CPP was written. So this change has been saved to main CPP, but that doesn't exit out of the program. If you wanna exit out of the program, you can do colon X, which saves and exits out of the program instead of colon W. So if we do colon X, that's gonna save and exit, although we didn't make any change. After that last one, it will still exit the program for us. So let's open main CPP back up. And now you know the absolute basics of Vim and how to kind of navigate around with the arrow keys and then make changes with the insert using the I key. And then of course, escape out of any type of operation that you're doing with the escape key, colon Q to quit out of a file, or colon W to write a file. The reason Vim and its predecessor VI used to be so popular is because in the early days, all a computer user would have to interact with their computer was a terminal. And the main way to open up and edit text files, or almost all files in general, was VI, which now Vim has largely taken its place since it's just an enhanced enhanced version of VI, which has more features including multi-level undo, multi-window support, a visual mode, and many other great additions such as recognizing syntaxes like here in my CPP file. You can see it's highlighting some of the if else clauses here. And that's one of the reasons I chose to use this file. So let's go ahead and quit out of this program and open up another file. So if I press escape a couple times, I do colon Q and I'm gonna do exclamation point since I can disregard any changes that I've made in here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then go over to another file. And then I'm just gonna show you real quick how to make a new file. And that's very simple. All you have to do is use Vim again and then some new file. And if you wanna add an extension, feel free to. I'm just gonna add the CPP extension and press enter. Now this opens a brand new file up ready for you to edit. So if I press I, this is a new file I'm creating. So with this new file, I'm gonna press escape a couple times and then colon X, that's gonna save and exit out of here. And now if I list, I can see that some new file exists. It's very easy to create a new file. If you ever need to quickly make some notes, that's a great way to do it. All right, and I'm gonna switch directories here, back one and into the DB directory where I have this lists.sl file. I'm gonna open that one up after I clear the terminal here. And in lists.sl, I just have a few users here, Savvy Nick, Savvy Bob, and Savvy George, and they all have some items. And I just wanna show you a few other handy commands to use in order to kind of navigate through Vim. And if you're happy with what you've already learned, feel free to go ahead and use that to edit files but this will just get you around a little quicker through a file using Vim. Also another place where Vim comes in handy is where you are using an SSH connection with a terminal and have no graphical user interface. Vim is a great tool to know how to use in that scenario where you can edit files remotely without leaving the terminal at all. So with this lists.sl file open, you can see that we have 18 different lines. So let's say I want to go to the 16th line. Well, how can I get there easily? Well, if I start typing in colon and I just type in a number and press enter, whatever number I typed in 
and after I press enter, it's going to take me to that line. And now I can press I and make an edit to this line. So it's very simple to navigate to a specific line. Again, all you have to do, I'm gonna hit escape and then colon, some number. So let's say three, and that takes me to line three. Again, if you're done with that operation, you can press escape a couple times. Don't be shy with that escape key. Another neat feature to know about is if you do a forward slash and then you put some text here, Vim will actually search for whatever is after the forward slash. So since I have some text here, it's going to search for it. And it says here, pattern not found, some text. All right, well, let's actually search for a pattern that exists in here. So if I do escape a couple times, and then I do with the forward slash and just search for item. Well, here's the next occurrence of item that was found according to where the cursor was last. What if that's not the item that we're searching for? Well, in order to keep searching, go ahead, press enter, and then just press N, and that will continue searching the document for item. And then once it reaches the end, it's gonna wrap around to the beginning once more. So you can press N as many times as you want, and you can see here, it keeps scrolling through the items. So how can you actually scroll back one item? Well, you press Shift N, and that will scroll you back to the previous item. So in order to go forwards, you just press N. In order to go backwards, you press Shift N. And if we escape a couple times, we can search for a different type of an item. So what if we want an item that's capitalized? Well, forward slash, and then we type in item with a capital I, and now we're searching for a different type of item. If we press Enter, and then we do Next, you can see that we're going through all the items with a capital I, and then Shift N, we go back through the items. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. All right, and if I hit escape a few times, a few other things I'll show you real quick. So if you do DD, like David David, that will erase the line item that you currently have your cursor on. So my cursor is here on item two, I do DD and item two goes away. If you only do D once, that's not gonna do anything. But if you do it a second time, that will delete the item. So if I do undo, which is the U key, I can do undo until I've gone back to the oldest change. And now I'm gonna scroll up. And the one other thing, what if I wanna delete multiple items? Well, that's possible too. You just type in the number of lines you wanna delete. So let's say I wanna delete three lines. You can see three shows up right here. And then if I type in D, you'll see D shows up and D one more time, it deleted the three items, including the line I had highlighted with the cursor. If I do undo with you, it'll bring back those three line items. What other topics would you like me to cover? What other topics would you like me to cover in the Savvy Tip series? Please post your suggestions below in the comment section and we'll continue with just a few other commands here that I think could bring some benefit to you. If you do shift G, that'll take you to the very bottom of any file. And if you do GG, like goal goal, that'll take you to the very top of a file. Imagine having very long files. This is a great thing to know. So you can just instantly start from the top or instantly start from the bottom and make your way to wherever you need to go with Vim. So let's go ahead and recap what commands we learned about real quick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and escape out of here and create a new file. Well, let's just call them operations. And let's talk about a few things. So if we do vim path to file, that just opens up, opens up a current file. If you do file some file name, this creates a new file called some file name. You can use the arrow keys or jkh, jkh and l to navigate through the file using Vim. I lets you insert text wherever the cursor currently is. O creates a new line under where your cursor is and allows you to insert text, colon Q with an exclamation point, say, quits out and disregards all changes to the file, colon X, saves and exits out of a file, colon forward slash some text, Vim will try to find some text inside the file. If you use lowercase n or uppercase n with some text, that you're searching for. We'll go to the next occurrence of some text, and this will go to the previous occurrence of some text. 
So just to kind of group these, I'm gonna put a space here, space here, space here, and another space here. If you do colon a number like five, this will go to line five in the file. DD will delete the current line where cursor is located and some number like 5dd will delete five lines and including the line where the cursor is. Undo is a great one. So if you type U, this will undo the last change made. The shift key and G takes you to the bottom of a file. Otherwise, GG will take you to the top. All right, and that's really it. I'm gonna go ahead and save and exit out of here. So escape and then colon X. That'll save my operations file. And if I go back in, you can see that I have all of the stuff that I wrote out. I'll go ahead and put this in the description below so you can reference this. And the very last thing I'll show you is if you type in Vim Tutor, Vim actually has a very nice text file here that allows you to go through various different lessons and learn all the things that we talked about today. Make sure to check this out if you want more help. Well, that should give you a basic understanding of how we use Vim, the text editor, and how to use basic commands inside of Vim to edit and save files. I hope you enjoyed this savvy tip about how to use Vim, the text editor. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.